Similar to my first video, I will again be referencing this article, but in a bit more detail. It will be linked down below, and I do think it's worth taking the time to read. The purpose of this video is not meant to bash someone else's work, it's meant to educate you so that you can make an informed decision on what's best for you and your threat model. This issue occurs with F-Droid's underlying architecture and how they sign apps. F-Droid signs all apps on their main repository with their own signing keys. You can think of signing an app like attaching a passport to it so you can verify the authenticity of who created it. In other app stores, apps are signed using the developer's keys so you can be sure it came from them. In the case of F-Droid, it's signed with the F-Droid keys, so now you're forced to trust them. Sticking with the analogy, with F-Droid, instead of seeing the developer's passport, you will see F-Droid's passport. This means that you're adding another party to the mix that you now need to trust besides the original developer. So after the initial installation, Android follows a trust on first use model, which means that upon installation of an app, Android pins the signature across the entire OS, including user profiles. Pinning a signature means that the OS only trusts that initial signature for the app, and all future updates must use that same signature that was pinned by the OS. This helps prevent a scenario where the source you download updates from gets compromised and a malicious actor signs the app with a new key after they compiled it with a backdoor. You'll try to install the malicious update, but you won't be able to because the signature on that malicious update doesn't match the signature that was pinned by the OS. As I mentioned, F-Droid apps are signed with the same key. Therefore, if a malicious actor compromises the F-Droid signing keys, they could sign and distribute malicious code in any apps that are signed by F-Droid in the repository. So part of F-Droid's inclusion policy, which is the policy that governs what an app needs to have to be included in the repository, is that an app must be free of any proprietary libraries or ad services, which I can admit does sound great in theory. The problem with this is that that means that a developer must make specific changes to their app so that it does comply with the F-Droid policies. This means that some developers may need to maintain a separate version of their app specifically for the F-Droid repository. This can lead to the F-Droid repository lagging behind the actual current version of an app while the developer updates this additional version they need to maintain. In addition, the F-Droid build process is only partially automated because the signing keys that F-Droid uses are on an air-gapped machine, meaning that this machine is not connected to any sort of network. This in turn forces a human to have to manually trigger the signing process. Again, this sounds great in theory when you hear they use an air-gapped machine to sign their apps, but this system is only in place because F-Droid is signing apps with their own keys and not developer keys. The system is air-gapped because it's a single point of failure, and if that is compromised, it could lead to cascading security issues. If you're up for an educational read, this GitHub issue has some reasons why Signal isn't on F-Droid. The comments by Moxie Zero are particularly interesting. He's one of the co-founders of the Signal Foundation. I first remember hearing about him from using his tool SSL strip back in the day, but I digress. So back to the main topic. All of these caveats lead to F-Droid having slower updates compared to traditional distribution systems. Some main reasons for having updates are new features, bug fixes, and most important of all, security updates. Having lagging updates means that you're exposed to security vulnerabilities for longer periods of time, which as you can imagine, is not ideal. F-Droid allows for multiple app repositories to exist within the same app, which violates the Android security model. The OS expects you to trust an app repository as a single source of apps. F-Droid by design violates this. So besides the previous issues mentioned, you're also trusting F-Droid not to mess this up. The article also pointed out something I came across in the past and couldn't figure out what was going on. If you've ever installed F-Droid on your main user profile, updated it, and then at a later time wanted to install it on another user profile using the APK on fdroid.org, you may have been unable to. Android has downgrade prevention, which means that you can't install an older version of an app. This is a security feature to prevent a malicious actor from installing an older version of an app that has a vulnerability that they can exploit. The fdroid website continuously hosts an older version of the fdroid app. According to this forum post, this is for stability reasons, so they don't push new users onto the newest version of the app. As of the time of this recording, the F-Droid website has version 1.14, but the latest version is 1.15.2. In the past, I've heard you need to be careful downloading apps from third-party sources because they're usually not as up-to-date as the main source, but this is the first time I've come across a group who purposely distributes an old version of their app, 
I don't really have much more to say about this. It's just bad practice. In a future video, I'm going to be demoing an alternate method to using a third-party app store such as Fdroid or Droidify to keep your open source apps up to date. Once that's available, I'll pin that on the screen now and I will link that down below as well. At the very least, I think it's important you have as much information as possible so that you can make an informed decision on what's best for you.